What does it mean to keep peace? I want you to listen to what Paul said to the to this church at Rome. Do all that you can to live in peace. Now it's right there on the screen. With who? Who does it say? All right, let's say it a little bit better. Do all that you can to live at peace with who? If they don't look like you, believe like you, think like you, act like you, have a different color skin than you, have a different part of the world they grew up in than you, pull for a different team than you, vote different than you. This had to be talked about in the New Testament because even back then, even in family relationships, even in work relationship, there was rubs, right? People weren't getting along or, or people didn't see eye to eye in the church on something. And, and Paul was saying, listen, it matters how you live. Now I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna get out of it. And I'm gonna say it. I know more people that don't go to church because they know people that go to church than any other reason. They assume everybody is like the person they know. And if they go, well, if they go to church, well, I don't care anything about it. How in the world do we learn to be a peacemaker? Now, here's the key word, learn. I don't think it's necessarily natural. I don't think it's something that comes natural. I don't think it's something that you're just going to be able to do because you thought about it and said, well, I want to be better at that. I think it's an intentional thing we all have to work on. How do we learn to do that? Well, Jesus begins to address it. Point number one, right there in your outline. You got pen, pencil to write with or thumbs to type with. Write down this. Number one, start the conversation. You own starting the conversation. We always remember when there's a broken relationship. If you remember, go. So you're on the way to the altar, I'm bringing my sacrifice, and I remember, man, I, had, I got sideways with this person, that person. I need to go make that right. Jesus said, this is how big a deal it is. Lay it down, go make amends with them. Now, does he say they are going to agree with you? No. Your job is not their response. Your job is your action. Does that make sense to everybody? Your job isn't they agree or not. That's not what he said. If you remember, go. That's your responsibility. If God brings division between you and someone else, you've got to own it, whether it's your fault or not. You've got to, you've got to work to make amends. But look at the second part of that. Settle your differences quickly. Settle them quickly. And here's why. The longer they sit, the worse they get. Can y'all agree with that? The longer they sit, the worse they get. You know that I've watched small things like this destroy homes, destroy businesses. I've watched small splinters destroy teams. Why? Because they chose not to deal with it quickly. The longer you let it sit, the worse it always gets period. But look at number two. Ready? Number two is this. I want you to listen first. Scripture all throughout the New Testament talks about this ability to listen. Is listening natural? Not normally. Talking's natural. It's easier for, you, for me to defend my side than hear your side. Is that true of you? Because while you're telling me your side, I'm formulating my response to your side. I may not ever hear a word you say. I may not ever hear because I'm thinking about what I'm going to say. Listen to how James nails it. It's going to come right up on the screen. It's one of my favorite little verses in all of Scripture. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all, he's talking to this early church, be, what's the next word? What to listen? What does he say? Quick to listen. We should go into every conversation, especially in a conflict conversation, quick to listen. What if we live like this? Wonder how many problems would get resolved quickly if we listened. And not just listen to the words, but listen to their heart of the why behind the words. Point number three, here we go. Attack the problem, not the person. 
Mm. <clears throat> you know where you know where relationships go awry is when we attack the person, not the problem. We're not we're not even dealing with the problem anymore. Now we're dealing with the person. Now it's personal. Well, this is this is where you know where it's going. You always oh well we're going down the personal road. Well, your parents, bah, whatever comes next. When we attack the problem, it doesn't get personal. But when we attack the person, it always is a problem. See, most of us avoid conflict at all costs. And then when we finally decide to deal with it, we're mad and we're anxious and we, boom, we lash because here's the deal. We want to be right at all costs. I would rather be right and lose the relationship than be proved wrong or thought wrong and have the other person look like the winner. For some of us, words are weapons. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not, that's not true. They won't hurt you. They'll destroy you. And you'll never forget them. What you say in the heat of battle, you want forgiveness for? And some people, somebody will say, yeah, I forgive you for that. They don't forget it. Finally, number four, ready? Be willing to change. The hardest part of this is taking out the mirror and going, oh my gosh, this is me. And listen, of all of these, this is probably my biggest struggle. My biggest struggle. I get it. I understand. But I want to change. I want to be better. But the wisdom from above is, first of all, pure. It's also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. Not meaning they're right and I'm wrong. This is the phrase we use a lot at North Star. Sometimes we just got to agree to disagree. You're not going to change my opinion. You're not, I'm not going to change yours. And that's okay, but I'm not going to lose a relationship. Everybody look at me. Life is short, ladies and gentlemen. Life is short. It's here one minute, and it's gone the next. You really want to walk around and be a destroyer? Don't say today what you'll regret tomorrow if you don't get a chance to make it right. Just don't say it. God's calling on your life is bigger than you. Live at peace with everyone as best you can. 